All right, guys, welcome back to the podcast. Tom Gosney from Gosney Ovens is joining me on the podcast today. We're going to talk about his background, how we got started, and I'm pretty excited to have him on the show all the way over from the UK. Tom, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Very much appreciated, my man. Lovely to be here, man. Lovely to meet you, Bruce. I have been on doing these podcasts with individuals who have started. We're recording this in January of 2021. Uh, and I've done a lot of podcasts over the last six to nine months from people who have kind of started their pizza journey, starting with a small pop-up or doing these events at breweries. And like, that's how they're starting their pizza business. And they're using, a lot of them have said they used your ovens. So I thought I'd reach out and have a quick chat with you, kind of see how you, you got into the business and how you got started and what your background really is. So for people listening now, let's, let's go into that. Like, how did you get started with all this? So, you know, there's a... <clears throat> It's interesting. There's a really like poignant story behind my background and how I got into pizza. And um, I was, I was so, so sort of delving right back, right? I was like no good at school. I was useless. I was quite a naughty kid. Didn't, <laughs> didn't really, didn't do, really do well in formal education, right? Like dyslexic, can't concentrate that well in the classroom, highly practical, really creative. Yep. And, uh, and because of that, I just didn't really succeed at school. So I was just, I was just naughty. I, I acted out and got myself into trouble and like ended up getting booted out of my schools and my colleges and just wasn't very successful. And that sort of led into my teenage years and escalated quite dramatically. Got involved with partying a little too hard, you know, got involved with drugs and drink and, and, and it sort of my life spiraled out of control, Bruce. It was, it was pretty crazy, man. It was a, uh, my teenage years were crazy. And so I actually got to a turning point. And this is, there's, there's a connection to the background of this, which is connected to pizza quite randomly. But I got to a point in my life at the age of 21 where I decided enough was enough and I needed to make some changes. So I decided to put myself into rehabilitation. I went into rehab in South Africa for, for the best part of 12 months and came out like clean, from, free from drink, free from drugs. And I'm like next month, I'm 14 years clean. So I was successful from that, that point in my life, just turning Rats. my life around. Thank you, man. Yeah, it was cool. It was, it was, it was one of my greatest achievements to date um, alongside my, my family, my wife and my kids. And, uh, and the business is, is up there for me as well. But it was really interesting. I came out and I'd never really known how to socialize without drinking or, or partying with my mates. And so... So I turned to food and I was doing dinner parties for friends and we would do big cookouts and just cook loads of amazing food. And then one evening we, I decided to make pizzas in my conventional oven, in my electric oven in the kitchen. <laughs> and they just, they came out the oven and they were like soggy. They weren't very crispy. They were, you know, they just weren't, weren't very good pizzas. But, yeah. I, you know, I sort of got the bug of making the dough and like, I really enjoyed that process. And so that night I, uh, I sat on my I sat on my laptop in the lounge and I was chatting to my to my girlfriend who's now my wife and I just said, uh, you know, I want to build a pizza oven in our back garden. At the time, I was like, I was working as a builder, I was laboring, right? We had no money, we were skint, and uh, my missus was like, you cannot spend our money on a pizza oven in the back garden. So I looked online; they were all quite expensive, and so I just decided that I would build one. When and was this? Most, this was this was two thousand and nine, so this was like ten years ago, right? Okay. Just over ten years ago. And so I literally, the next morning, man, I was digging foundations in my garden. Yeah, awesome. I, uh, I, I was just like, I'm going to buy the materials. I pitched it to my wife that it would cost me a couple of hundred pounds rather than 1,500 pounds that these ovens were costing online. Yeah. Little did she realize, like, I had no clue what it would cost. It ended up costing <laughs> me probably more than buying one after I'd finished. But I'd spent a week building this, like, hand-built brick oven. And so I researched it online for an evening and then just got going, built it. And the most amazing thing happened, Bruce, like built my oven. It was a monstrosity. It looked awful. It was the ugliest thing you'd ever seen. <laughs> right. And I sort of turned my hand to the construction of it. And um, something magical happened when I lit it, though, man. It was crazy. I, uh, so firstly, I didn't have a clue how to use it. I lit it and it didn't get hot and it didn't cook anything. And I was like, this is this has just been the biggest waste of time I've ever <laughs> I've ever spent on something. And then I realized, like, I put the flue slightly in the wrong place. So the flue was in the dome. And so it was letting a lot of the heat out. So I restricted the flue a little bit and just got a, a bucket load of wood in it. Got the thing hot. And when I got that thing hot, man, for the first time, it was like this, this 
this like awakening moment for me. It was like when I saw a pizza cook in 60 seconds next to a fire, it was like the most captivating thing that I'd ever seen in my life. And, um, and I remember I built it at the end of the summer. I got to the point where it was winter in England. It was raining and it was windy and it was horrible and it was cold. And I was just constant. I just lived in the garden cooking food in the oven, man. Like bought a, bought a cheap sort of gazebo pop-up tent. It was like, <laughs> covered in soot on the inside by the times so I was using it every day. I would sort of sit in a cloud of smoke because I was in a tent using my oven. But I, do you know what? Without rambling on too much about it, I was hooked, man. At that point, you know, I would, I would invite my friends around. I was looking for new ways to socialize because I was like, the life of recovery was new to me. And, um, and this did it for me, man. Like my friends, my friends, all of a sudden, after a, a couple of days, they wouldn't bring beers around anymore. They would bring toppings and I would make dough. <laughs> That's awesome. And we would, mate, we would sit in the garden and eat pizza all night. I got really fat really quick, but it was cool, man. I was like fat and happy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I mean, listen, like there is no better community than having people over your house and cooking pizza in the backyard like this you, you can cook hot dogs and hamburgers but like there's something about that pizza oven that draws everybody in when there's one out there mate totally man it's like that engagement of being able to make your own pizzas stretch your own dough launch it in the oven there's so many like magical processes that you take place when you're actually just constructing a pizza it's like really fun and so that was it man and i i I built this oven in my garden and all of a sudden I was getting my friends asking me to build them in their parents' house. And like this, this thing that we'd created was so magical. And so I was getting people knocking on my door, my friends and friends' parents saying, build one for me. And so I, I did. I, I, that was really where the idea for the company began. I, I, with a five grand loan from my mum, I asked my mum for a 5,000 pound loan and I, well, sorry, I jumped a bit there. So I started building hand-built brick ovens and then quickly realized that there was no scalability to it as a business. It was taking me like 10 days to build these ovens and I couldn't charge a fortune for them. Right. Um, because I was sort of new to it, lacking confidence and so on and so forth. And so I quickly realized that I needed to develop something that was more scalable. And so I, I designed, I designed my first sort of modular precast pizza oven, which is like a little concrete igloo um, with a flue and a mouth. And it was like precast, so it was one, one casting. And so I got a 5,000 pound loan from my mum. 2,000 pounds of that went on a mold to make the mold that, to cast my design. How big was and it? So, mate, it was small. So it was, two, it was two foot internally, so 24 inch internal. And uh, it was like a, it was this cute little flueless concrete igloo. It was just looked literally like a little igloo, right? And, uh, but the thing that I did with it, it was precast. So it came with a base and like, I found a manufacturer in the North of England that would fill my mold for me. We'd, I'd spent ages researching material compositions of refractory. So I sort of knew the material mix that I wanted. I spent, I, I get quite obsessive, part of the addiction in my personality. I like research refractory concrete to, you know, <laughs> to put everything about it. And then I look, went to them with my recipe and my mold and said, could you fill it for me? And then my deal with those guys was that they would fill my molds and ship the oven directly to the customer. And so then I turned my hand to marketing and like learning how to market. And that was really how the business was born. And we fast track from there to now, like we, grew the Stone Bay Coven Company, which was the name of my first brand. We consolidated it into Gosney, what it is today, which is Gosney, um, but grew a range of six ovens under the Stone Bay Coven Company brand, which were all like premium sort of traditional wood-fired ovens. And then in 2013, we moved into the professional oven space. So I saw an opportunity to develop a product that didn't exist. So in the UK at that time, restaurateurs could only buy ovens that were fully built and made so they were taking shop fronts down and using cranes and lifting equipment to put ovens into restaurants right and so i i developed and designed a a, a kit and a system that allowed us to take a commercial oven professional oven through a standard doorway up or downstairs and assemble it and fully finish it in a day wow and so we launched that in the uk in 2013 and it was a whirlwind bruce man it was like we launched it and we just started landing these insane contracts with these big restaurants, these big restaurant groups. And we, we just became the market leader in the UK for commercial wood-fired ovens in about a year. And, and the business was just rocketing. Um, 
which was amazing. And then whilst I was doing that, I just, I don't know where I found the time thinking back, but whilst we were doing that, I saw an opportunity to, 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 to design an oven that was, um, that was more accessible to like the wider market. So as Stone Bake Oven Company ovens, although, you know, we launched them at a relatively affordable price, they were like equivalent of like 600 bucks, um, the smallest. There were still issues with shipping them. We couldn't ship them outside of the UK. They were like 250 pounds. And so you'd have yeah. to ship them on a, on a pallet. And then you, by the time we'd absorbed shipping costs, there were no margin in it to scale it outside of the UK. So that was really where the, where, that was really where the rationale and the concept for Rockbox was born. Um, it, was, it was an oven that was light enough to be able to ship around Europe and into the US. So it had to be below sort of 45 pounds in weight. Um, it had to work like a traditional stone oven. So, you know, traditional pizza ovens work on thermal mass, right? So they right. absorb the heat, the stone stores the heat, and that's how they re-radiate and cook so efficiently. So that was a huge challenge in designing Rockbox. So it had to be a certain size, a certain weight, and cook the same way as a traditional stone oven. And so it took us three years to develop it. Um, we had to engineer it to like, sort of deflect the flame off the back of the product and use loads of insulation under the stone and in the body. And we ended up creating this amazing little product that just worked like a professional oven. And to your earlier point, I feel like I've been talking for ages. Sorry, man, I don't stop. You, you ask me a question, I'll go for ages. That's I'm fine. Listen, I'm just here to listen. I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I don't have a problem cutting you off if I have a question for you. Yeah, so just I'll do, throw just something do. Yeah, I, yeah. Mate, I, There's so much to say about this business. I end up talking for hours so just I'm <laughs> shut up if you need me to that's fine um and so yeah so rockbox rockbox was born and we launched it in 2016 and um mate it's just been it's been a bit of a whirlwind since then really it's 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 re it's been like i you know a really sort of amazing experience and i feel i feel really proud to have gone on the journey that we have but we launched it on um indiegogo which is similar to kickstarter yeah um, in 2016 with a shoestring budget, man, like less than $5,000 to like do a global launch with it. And we, we, we ended up, we ended up running a campaign where we, we took over a million dollars, $1.2 million in sales in wow. 30 days, which was awesome, man. That's crazy. And we, you kind of caught it right on the, you kind of caught it right on the, I feel like there's, I don't want to say like a revolution, but there's like, a, like awareness from the regular public, like not people in the pizza community of good pizza and i think it started yeah. you know 2000 probably with like instagram and facebook becoming popular where people could really like connect and see what other people are doing and i think that's what you caught right like you caught that yeah. that time moment in time where people all around the world were sharing photos and videos and people were aware of there's really good pizza out there that you can make at home and you don't need this huge massive oven in your backyard in order to do it. And I think you got luck, not lucky, but timing was just right for you where you caught that. Yeah. So that, that's a hundred percent true. I saw it coming early because we were in the commercial space, right? Yeah. And there was this movement after the, after the 2008 recession in the UK, there was like this movement for simple food, basic ingredients, like sort of unpretentious dining like basic ingredients made with love and like street food was huge, right? And so yeah. these like four basic ingredients of flour, water, salt, and yeast to make these like three day fermented dough balls. They're these, these, these artisanal puffy crust, like things of beauty. That was sweeping the UK and that was what we were selling our commercial ovens for. And so I saw, I saw this movement in the, in the restaurant industry taking place in the UK, man. And it was like, just sort of had to share the love with it into the consumer side. And that was really why Rockbox was born. It was this, it was this love that I had for wood-fired cooking that sort of essentially grounded me in my recovery, right? And saved me is, is that sort of how I'm connected to it. And, and then just being able to share that with a product that was more accessible to many was just something that was like such an exciting proposition to go after. And yeah, it's, mate, it's been, a, it's been an amazing journey. Like Rockbox, Rockbox has just done exceptionally well. You know, we've, 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 we've grown significantly as a business and, you know, feel really fortunate to have been able to, to be part of, um, 
making loads of memories in people's backyards with a product. And that's like super special to me, man. That's how it started. And even like now when we're going through this and, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of a year into this whole COVID situation, you've started, you've helped people start businesses with the ability to start a business without having to spend a ton of money. Like the, the mobile rock box that you created is affordable and someone could, you know, have three, two or three or four of those and start a mobile business. Whereas before they'd have to, you know, they'd have to save a significant amount of money to buy a mobile oven from a company like Fort Savorni or something like that, you know? Yeah. It's like 10, 15 grand, right. To buy a yeah. portable, you know, some, something along those lines. And, you know, it was, yeah. Rockbox, Rockbox does a similar job. You know, we've got so many people that are, are set up, like you said, with three or four rock boxes and they just pump out these insane pizzas all day, every day, man. It's yeah. crazy. I was talking to uh, someone, oh, I forget, Lewis from uh, Peels on Wheels Pizza on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and on the show. And he, he was cooking Detroit style pizza out of the rock box, which I was like, holy smokes. I didn't know you could cook Detroit style pizza out of the, like a mobile oven like that. Do you know what, man? It's been insane to see like just the creations that these guys make, right? We've got some real artists in the yeah. market making, you know, expressing themselves through food and some of the stuff that these guys generate and like we see on social is just like, it's insane, man. It's incredible. And this movement, it's just, you know, they're all aiding this movement that's, that's taking place globally at the moment in this like incredible artisanal sort of pizza movement that's just just getting anybody you know you don't you don't need to be a pizza chef you don't need to be a chef to be able to be part of it it's incredible man no you could just like it's about experimenting right and trying and testing out like a yeah. lot of the people who even the people we've had on this podcast you know that we talked to and um you think that they've figured it out they still haven't figured their shit out yet they're still going through the process and like testing and tweaking and like trying to figure out how to get better every single day so if you get a rock box or, and you can sit home and like work on your dough recipe for your friends and neighbors, like that's how a lot of businesses from people who have been on this podcast started. Yeah. And that's it. And we see it, we see it so much, man. Like, especially with COVID, as you said, you know, yeah. like so many people have been unfortunate and where they've, you know, they've come to a crossroads in their career because of the circumstances and the pan pandemic. And, um, you know, it's, it's well it's just been amazing to see it's like really humbling to see Rockbox being part of so many so many people's new journeys and like that's you know it's re i'm really really proud to have been part of that that journey man yeah you guys do a great job on social too like who does that for you or is that you or like how, what's the thought process behind getting is that just how you get the word out about the product yeah so we um we yeah we we, we manage all in-house from the uk um we We've got really Instagrammable products, right? Like they produce amazing food. So it's really easy to get people, to, you know, excited about our products when they can see like peels on wheels and the guys, the, the pizza that these guys make, man, is so Instagrammable. And yeah, so, he does a great you know, job on Instagram. Yeah, man. And so like we've, we've really just sort of embraced, embraced social for sharing our food and our, our creations. And we do a lot of in-house uh, recipe development and stuff like that. And so, you know, we, we really enjoy it, man. It's all, it's all part of the, all part of the journey at Gosney. We've all put on a few pounds since we've worked. <laughs> in the office. Um, yeah. but, but you know, that's, that's the nature of it, but it's good. Well, man. I literally make pizza at my house every night. Not, I'm not even Ooh. exaggerating every single night. Wow. I'm just and experimenting. Have you nailed your dough recipe? No, hey, heck no. No, of course not. No. <laughs> I, do you know what, man? That's what I love about it. Right. It was like, I became infatuated with, like retarding dough and fermenting dough in the early days, man. I was in fact, like I got so, I put on like, I don't know, like 50 pounds, man, eating pizza back to back every night. I got like, one of these things. This is like one of those walking things. Cause I got to make sure I walk enough, like with my steps. So that, cause I eat crazy. too much pizza at night. I got to make sure that I don't like get lazy and sit on my ass all day. <laughs> yeah. And so I, you know, like that's, that's the thing that I think is so amazing. Like you never arrive at the destination with pizza, man. It's always no. like an evolution. It's, the journey is, the journey is magical. And, um, and, and I still now sort of taking myself out of work, like one of the most favorite things to do. I just recently got a spiral mixer. Um, and it's, it's just been my, my love affair of lockdown, right? Like just yeah. making, <laughs> making different hydration doughs yes. and like different fermentations and beegers and Polishes and sourdoughs. And it's, 
yeah, it's been great, man. It's been, so it's I use great. like, I, I've been experimenting like with, you know, the Neapolitan style and, you know, a mobile oven or my friend owns the baking steel, which you can put in your oven. It's like yeah. a piece of steel. It makes it like a New York style. I've also been like experimenting with Detroit style, but I, I have to tell you, like my wife's kind of like already sick of me. If I came home with a spiral mixer, she might kick me out. <laughs> my wife wasn't happy about it, but I said it was for <laughs> R&D for work. There you like, go. This is R&D. This is yeah. R&D, babe. Like it's all good. She would only uh, let me take one of those spiral mixes and if I have like started to actually make money doing it. Like, all right, if you sell these yeah. pizzas, maybe you can do that. <laughs> and have you seen the new, have you seen the new one that we've released? The new oven that we've just released? Is it the, uh, is it like a, not a full the size dome? one, but it's a larger one, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's basically like the evolution of our, our products now. So we released it in, um, released it in September. It was like a digital launch, but it's called the, it's called the Gosney dome. And it's, it's basically, um, a completely different aesthetic to Rockbox. Um, it's bigger and it looks, it's sort of styled off a Neapolitan style oven. So like a Neapolitan professional oven, but it's sort of packaged in a, in a fully built, fully assembled out of a box. But it's a really cool bit of kit, man. Similarly to Rockbox. Is it the sorry, one that's on your Instagram post? Yeah. So it's on my, is it green on my Instagram post? Yes. Next to a big white one. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's basically like a mini professional oven, man. So if you guys out. want to follow Tom on Instagram, he's Tom Gosney, T-O-M-G-O-Z-N-E-Y. And also, by, while you're at it, just follow Gosney on Instagram too, G-O-Z-N-E-Y. Um, they do a yes, great the job dome, on Instagram. The dome, the dome is a game changer for us, man. It's something so what is that I'm one? Like, is that, I see little wood, wood sticks underneath it. Is that like a, wood, a real wood fire? Like you put wood in there? Yeah, so it's a real wood fire inside the oven, but it's got bags and bags of features, Bruce, man. It's... Uh, it is um, so. It's a. It's it's styled off a, a sort of professional Neapolitan oven. So it, it's got a really cool aesthetic. That I personally am absolutely in love with it. It's like my. It's like my baby. It's my third child. <laughs> and and uh, but it's got loads of cool features. So I we've got a we've got a patented docking system. So it sits on like this black dock. That you can put wood in, but it's also got this accessory port in the side of it. So. The accessory port houses attachments to make it do different things. So you can plug a cold smoker into it to cold smoke fish, cheese, anything like that. Also has an automated pellet smoker that you can put in. So it feeds in pellets and it, you, you're able to like have an automated smoker so you can slow roast. It's, it self-regulates with temperature. So you sort of plug it in with a thermocouple probe, set it to your desired temperature and you can do your 15 hour brisket in it. You oh, can wow. do ribs, all of that stuff. It's got an inbuilt steamer at the top of the oven. So if you're into making sourdough bread or artisanal bread, you can, you can shut the, uh, the rope seal door on the oven with your bread inside and inject steam into the oven. So it allows your bread to rise far further before crisping up. So, and then it's like runs on wood or gas. Um, so it basically, it's, a, it's sort of a, a hot smoker, a cold smoker, a bread oven, and a pizza, and a 950-degree wood-fired oven wow. that can run on wood or gas. So, it's, mate, it's just the coolest product, man. Can I use that in my kitchen? Yeah, so you can install it indoors, but you have to, you have to connect the, uh, the flue needs to be vented outside. So you'd mm. need to do, you need to do some works to vent it out of the house. Interesting. Um, but, but you could, you could use it indoors if you're, a, if you're really committed, which <laughs> I'm committed. <laughs> I know, man. I make pizza every <laughs> night, man. That my, that'll be it. That my kids would be in love hey, with that your, thing. If your wife won't let you have a spiral mixer, mate, she's gonna chuck you out the front door if you put an oven in her kitchen. That's true. I think yeah. that's true. Yeah, but you know what? Keep I keep it in the uh, garden, man. Build a man cave. There you go. Yeah, I gotta do that. I, I I gotta have some. See, the thing is, I can't have any friends over because it's like you know, it's we got with yeah. this certain situation. So I make all these pizzas and then I gotta like hand them out and then people look at me weird because they don't want to touch my pizza. <laughs> so yeah, man. Well. You know, it's 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 a shame, isn't it? Because I'm the same. In lockdown, I've just been belting out like loads and loads of pizzas. And you know, what do you do with them, man? Just, you know, yeah. Is, is that part of that obsessive nature of like wanting to perfect your dough? Yes. You know, I make batches of dough and cook like 25 pizzas and they're just a huge stack that you can't do much with. You know what? I think I might be turning my wife a little bit because she did get me dough trays for my birthday that I can did stick she? in my fridge. So, you know, maybe I'm maybe I'll start there and then I'll work my way slowly up to the mixer and the oven in the house. Yes, mate, you'll get that. You'll get that. Yeah. Slow, it's a slow process, kind of like anything, right? Like it starts, it starts small and you got to grow from there. Yeah, that's it, man. That's it. <laughs> just grind them down over time. Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, I, I just never quit. And I'm just going yeah. uh, to make sure over time, you're just going to be like, she's going to be like, all right, whatever. Just do whatever you want. Yeah, that's it, man. <laughs> but I love it. So that's the, how, is that something that 
you see people are using in restaurants or is that more of a home thing? So, so the dome is actually, it's a professional, it's a professional grade oven. You could be used for home or business use. Yep. Um, predominantly a consumer oven. So it's, it's, uh, you can fit a 16 inch pizza in it, but you can also smoke all your meats and do all your things like that. But we're seeing a lot of, especially from the UK, so we have more of a sort of professional presence here. Um, lots, of, lots of chefs are wanting to get them to put them on their cook line because they can stick them under type one hoods. Yeah. And then they can, they can use them as fish ovens, they can use them as flatbread ovens, pizza. So because it gets to 950 degrees, it just cooks wow. in a different manner. And so, so lots of, you know, specifically like fish and seafood that needs to cook quickly and wants to crisp up, they're just really, really good for that. But also meat, man. I, I mean, I, I cooked a coat de boeuf in it the other day at home. And it was insane, man. It was like, I had it, I had it set to about 850 degrees and just oil and salt on this piece of, on this piece of beef, right? And then just stick it in there. And it basically like, it's so hot. It reduces all the fat and like reduces the fat down and crisps it all up. And it just gets this like heavy bark on the outside of the meat. Yeah. So it's like crunchy and then like medium rare inside it, mate. It was so insane. And the same night, man, and, I did roast potatoes in it and because you know in your conventional oven indoors you get steam out of your oven indoors the moisture in the potatoes steam the oven up so they don't crisp up as much with the dry heat in the oven mate they were like the best roast potatoes I've ever eaten in my life man I like parboiled them in the kitchen and then just coated them in oil and salt blazed them in the oven for like eight minutes and they were like these crunchy in, mate they were just insane man <laughs> i like i need to share you know we need to share some of the content around the domes with some people but yeah. you could do such cool things the dry heat of the ovens man it's just like you, you can cook differently you know what you need to do is more of those i saw one of you I, I saw one video i think i looked it up today you were making pizza in the rock box you need to do some like yeah. videos like that put that on instagram or on youtube I, yeah i need to man i need to i've been so busy in the background like designing products running the company yeah. organizing stuff it's it's hard to carve out the time, but I, you know, I, I think over the next, the course of the next year or so, I think I'm going to get more, a bit more involved with cooking. Cause I love it, man. I'm passionate yeah. about it. I'm not, I'm not the best cook in the world. Um, I'm not a chef, but I'm like an adventurous home cook. I love making epic food, man. I think that's the majority of people who are listening to this podcast aren't classically trained chefs. They're yeah. someone who's been in the restaurant business and cook for a living. You know, that's what I see yeah. even myself. Like I'm not a chef by any means. I don't know shit about yeah. cooking really. I just know that yeah. I experiment and you know, sometimes it comes out good. Sometimes food. it comes out bad. Yeah. You want to produce food that brings people together and you can have memories and share moments. Right. And like, that's it, isn't it? That's why I love pizza. The reason I love pizza other than the fact that I grew up doing it. So it's like in my blood, I've never had people, maybe one person, and I don't ever talk to them, never had anybody come over to my house and been like, I don't like pizza. Yeah. You know, that it's one person food, has man. been banned from my house. Like they can't, <laughs> if you don't like pizza, I don't know if I could talk. I don't know if I trust you in life. <laughs> yeah. You're not trustworthy, man. No. Clearly you never trust a person that doesn't like pizza. But cause it's so versatile. You can do so many things. Like if you don't like cheese, you don't have to put cheese on it. If you don't like sauce, tomato sauce, you don't have to put tomato sauce on. Like it's so versatile of a product that you can make it with cauliflower or gluten-free or you know, really high yeah. quality flour. It's so many different varieties to make it. You can really please anybody. Yeah, that's it, man. That's it. Totally. Especially so with my kids now. Yeah. My kids nowadays and like all the kids now they're all vegans and they don't eat meat and like, I can't cook anything on the, so like pizza is the one thing that we can all eat together. Yeah. It's special, man. It's yeah. really special. Um, <laughs> so what's the next, do you guys have any new products coming? I know you're excited about the one you just mentioned, but anything else you have so, in yeah, the works? So so the dome is coming, man. That's like we are we're delivering that into um, into the market in March this is year. Is that available in the US? It's available in the US, yeah. So anybody you know that's like any sorry to interrupt. Anybody you know that has one in the US already? No one's got one in the US right now. Like not not one person. Uh, we are we're in the middle of like production at the moment, and so yep. they're about. To, we've got all the prototypes that we've ever used to develop it are based in the UK, in our office in the UK. And so we will be launching, we'll be going on sale in March um, with like limited quantity um, initially. And so we're, we're sort of, we're opening up sales in March on a first come first serve basis and, um, and then getting, getting ovens into people's hands. So we're super excited for it, man. It should be, it should be an amazing, um, 
an amazing season in our journey. Like this, this product specifically, it's similar when we launched Rockbox, Bruce, it was, it was really, really unique in the market when we launched Rockbox. You know, there wasn't portable pizza ovens weren't really a thing. Like, yeah, you know, like, like six or seven years ago, they weren't a thing. And now like they're everywhere. Right. And, um, you know, there was, there was, there was a couple of early movers, us being one of them, that like really innovated in the space. And I think when when Rockbox went to market, you know, it was it was the sort of first portable stone oven that was accessible, right? Yeah. What you know worked in the way that it did. And so it was almost like category building, which was, you know, it which was been such an awesome journey to watch that man and how like the portable space has evolved, you know. And now there's you know, there's tens, tens, twenties of brands selling different portable ovens. Um but, you know, it was, it was great to be an innovator in that space and one of the early sort of pioneers of portable ovens. And now, now I think we're, we're, we still are embracing that portable space, but we're sort of moving into, moving into something, something that excites the life out of me. Like portable excites me, but this, this product is the product that I, you know, I, 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 I would buy this like hands down, like rock, rock box is amazing, but I, I want, I would really love for me personally, I would love versatility. I want to be able to slow roast. I want to smoke. Yeah. Stuff that I love doing with this is like cooking a, cooking a pork butt in it for like seven or eight hours, but then having your dough proving, turning on the fire and being able to make your flatbreads and stick your pork butt in it. It's this all inclusive it's just so sexy, man. It makes cooking sexy. It's just so, it's so sick. I'm pumped for it, man. It's, it makes like you the at home, it gives you the ability to at home cook like you would get in a restaurant, which I enjoy. And like, that's something that's new. Like before I was looking at portable ovens way back in the day, but they were really yeah. expensive. You either had to build one yourself like you did or spend a lot of money. And like, this gives you an affordable way to kind of get into that market of being able to do, um, you know, cook pizza like you would get in a restaurant at home. That's it, man. That's it. And so, the um the dome is like the next the next the next product in our journey of of doing something to shake up the category and 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 do something new and innovative and exciting man we're you know everyone at, at gosney and and all of our all of our supporters and customers are, are really excited for for it to hit hit their gardens i love it you so do you have who's like your favorite pe- person so the go back to the rock box right is, is there anybody that it makes amazing pizza that you follow that uses the rock box that you can think of? Oh, mate, do you, do you know what? It would be a disservice to actually talk about, you know, to name a few. There's so many people that are just like incredible, right? Yeah. I think some of the early guys that we work from, some of the, like some of the OGs in it, um, like Pizza Jew is just, yes. do you know Pizza Jew from 101 Bakery 101? Yes. So we have Pizza Jew over to the UK. He's a bad man on the oven, mate. He's he's sick. And like, he's a great he's a great follow on Instagram too. If you follow him on Instagram, yeah, he is. So he was one of the OGs. There's too many to mention now. You know, like Adam Atkins is a guy that's representing hard in the UK peddling pizzas. Yep. Um. No, he's he is like a he, mate. He is a wizard on a rock box, man. He can he can do things that I didn't think were possible. <laughs> Serving single handedly to massive queues of people whilst counting their change and 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 opening dobles. He's he's pretty special, man. But there are mate, there are so many, um, too many to mention. It's like we said at the beginning of the conversation, bro. It's like this movement has been has been phenomenal to watch, and it's like it's exploding on Instagram, right? Isn't it? Yeah, it's for just, sure. Just, the pie slingers mate are just like out in full force are you guys on tiktok or anything no we're not on tiktok yet we quite ha- haven't quite branched into tiktok yet um we're we've got some we've got some interesting plans this this coming year we're sort of we've got some new initiatives that we're we're about to start within gosney some new marketing initiatives and um some really exciting stuff in the pipeline man um that will be unveiled this summer so we've 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 got we've got some plans that we're pumped about Excellent. Where can people go if they want to reach out to you and say hello or show you? I'm sure you get a bazillion people tagging you on photos from their rock box already. So maybe they're not that. Yeah, I do. So like my, I I generally, I'm less active on Facebook. Uh, Facebook is sort of like a personal, a personal thing for me, even though um, I've sort of steered away from it. I'm, I'm a big man on Instagram. I like my Instagram. And so if anybody wants to, wants to say hi, man, um, it's, it's my handles, Tom Gosney, T-O-M-G-O-Z-N-E-Y. And, uh, and I do my, you know, I, I get back to everyone that reaches out to me on Instagram, man. I, um, I like, I love chatting to people, love hearing what people are up to and stuff like that. 
Yeah, we'll link all that up in the show notes as well. And if they want to check out the ovens, is uh, Gosney, G-O-Z-N-E-Y.com. Is that your website? Yeah, that's correct. And it's the, the handle for our Instagram is Gosney as well, G-O-Z-N-E-Y. Yeah, don't hang up, but it was awesome talking to you. Great conversation. And anyway, go to smartpizzamarketing.com if you want to get the Instagram handles or the website and check out the gods in the oven. It looks pretty cool um, if you want to go purchase one of those. Tom, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast, man. I appreciate your time. My pleasure, bro. It was really nice to be here.